Hello, I'm Dr. Carolyn Salter, and I'm a fellow in male sexual and reproductive medicine at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Thank you for this opportunity to share our research. Today, I will be discussing the use of testosterone therapy in men with organ-confined Gleason 6 or 7 prostate cancer post-radical prostatectomy. We have nothing to disclose. So the use of testosterone therapy in men with prostate cancer is controversial. And this goes back to the seminal paper in 1941 by Huggins and Hodges, where they demonstrated that in men with advanced prostate cancer that the administration of testosterone leads to disease progression. And historically, we have withheld testosterone therapy from these men. However, the saturation model of testosterone suggests that at a subphysiologic level of testosterone that further increases do not lead to growth in either benign or malignant prostate tissue because the androgen receptors on these prostate cells are already maximally stimulated. And this has led to the concept that testosterone therapy can be safe in men with prostate cancer. There's an absence of robust long-term safety data on the use of testosterone therapy in men with prostate cancer. However, there are some small studies that suggest that testosterone therapy is safe in these men. The largest such study is by Pasizak et al. in 2013. They had 103 men who were post-radical prostatectomy who were on testosterone therapy compared to 49 controls who did not receive testosterone. And at a mean follow-up of 27.5 months, the biochemical recurrence rate was 15% in the testosterone group compared to 53% in the controls. Now, it's important to note that all the recurrences in either group were only in men who had high-risk disease. But this study does nicely demonstrate that testosterone therapy appears to be safe in men with prostate cancer. And so the purpose of this study is to evaluate the safety of testosterone in men with prostate cancer post-radical prostatectomy. This was a retrospective review of prospectively collected clinical data. We included men who have testosterone deficiency, and this is a clinical diagnosis comprised of signs and or symptoms, as well as two morning testosterone levels that are less than 300 nanograms per deciliter. And we use LCMS, or liquid chromatography and mass spectroscopy, which is the most accurate lab assay. All these men were post-radical prostatectomy, and their surgical pathology demonstrated Gleason 6 or 7 organ-confined disease. They all had undetectable post-op PSA. Patients were counseled on the risks, benefits, and the absence of long-term safety data on testosterone therapy in prostate cancer patients. And it was a negotiated decision between the patient and the physician whether to initiate testosterone therapy. The modality of testosterone was based on patient preference and insurance coverage and included transdermal, intramuscular testosterone, or clomiphene citrate. After initiation of testosterone therapy, we checked their PSA and testosterone levels two to four weeks afterwards, depending on the modality of treatment, and we continued to check every two to four weeks after any dose adjustments. Once these men were on a stable testosterone dose, we would continue to check these labs every six months thereafter. We also evaluated them around three to four months after testosterone initiation to assess for symptomatic improvement. We had a total of 422 men with a mean age of 61, and their pre-op PSA was a mean of 4.5, and these men were split evenly between Gleason 6 and 7 disease. Their baseline total testosterone was 228, which increased to 520 with testosterone therapy. We initiated testosterone at a median duration of nine months post-prostatectomy, and at last follow-up, these men had been on testosterone for a median of 38 months. Over half of our patients were on transdermal therapy, 28% were on clomiphene citrate, and 16% were on intramuscular testosterone. With regards to the PSA outcomes, we've had one patient who had a PSA recurrence that occurred two and a half years post-prostatectomy and one year after the initiation of testosterone. So in conclusion, we have demonstrated that in this carefully selected patient population with Gleason 6 or 7 organ-confined disease with an undetectable post-op PSA, that testosterone therapy appears to be safe and there's no data um, that suggests there's an increased risk in biochemical recurrence in these men. Strengths of this study is that we have a relatively large patient population with over 400 men. And we also have strict criteria for testosterone deficiency diagnosis, including using LCMS, which is a, a very accurate lab assay. 
The clinical implications of this study are that we have demonstrated that testosterone therapy is not dangerous in men post-prostatectomy, and this really opens up this entire group of men to the overall health and quality of life benefits of testosterone therapy. A limitation is that this was a single center study at a tertiary oncologic referral center, and thus results might not be generalizable to more community-based practices. Additionally, we'd like to continue this study with larger patient populations and longer-term follow-up to more fully define the safety of testosterone therapy in these men. Thank you.